How was that transition for you, getting your first job coming out of school? It was less intentional than I would like to say. Uh, when I, I remember right before I graduated, I interviewed for a job with an automotive company. It was an automotive supplier. It wasn't one of the big auto companies, but I flew out to, where was it? Ohio or something, somewhere out in that area. And the, the job was to design wire harnesses for automotive. And it was super boring. And oh. I, 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 I share this story because I didn't have a, a very specific idea of what I wanted to do after graduating. And so I think it was a career fair or something. And I bumped into this company and they're like, oh, you should come out and interview us, interview with us. So I said, okay, great. I'll, I'll go out and interview with you. I, I didn't have uh, uh, a very well-planned path for what I was going to do after graduation. So I interviewed there and it was, it was just awful. It, it felt like, oh, I, I would, I would not enjoy being in this environment. Uh, it was kind of boring, mundane work. Right. And I thought, wow, is this what engineering is going to be? This, this sounds like drudgery. And a roommate of mine decided that he was going to go into biomedical engineering. And so he was talking about biomedical engineering and I didn't really understand what it was. Even I said, what is that? What's biomedical engineering? What do you do? And he had this internship. I think it was with uh, Edwards maybe. Yeah. Anyway, it was a large medical device company and he was sharing a few of the things that he was going to do in his internship. And I thought that sounds really cool. Like working with the body and understanding anatomy and devices that that work in the body. I think I might like to learn more about that. So instead of just uh, graduating and going off and finding a job, I thought I'm going to get a master's degree in bioengineering. So that's what I did. Uh, flew down to Arizona and did a master's degree in bioengineering. And one thing led to another. There's a company down here who hired me as an intern uh, doing testing, uh, medical device testing. Wow. And then from there, they introduced me after I graduated with my master's to a, a company down here that uh, was an engineering services company. So I wow. got hired on there. And that's that's where I really started my engineering career doing really fun work, uh, not boring drudgery design designing wiring harnesses, but it was an engineering services company. So they had a lot of different projects coming through. I was mostly focused on doing medical device design and mm -hmm. um, just, I got to do fun things, right? I got to do CAD design. I got to go out and machine parts out in the lab. I got to build things and test things and do assembly work and 3D printing and uh, a little bit of uh, manufacturing documentation and just all these different things that were, were really a, a lot of fun. And that's kind of how I, I got into the beginning of my career as an engineer. That's exciting. So when I look at your LinkedIn and I look at your career progression, you had a, a quick little stop doing drywall tools, but then you then you said you kind of started that internship. I assume that's whenever you were a test engineer at biomechanics. Is that is that what you were talking about when you're describing working while you were in your master's? Yeah, the, the drywall tools, that was, uh, uh, I guess, really, that was the start of my career as an engineer, although I was a student still back then. I was an intern oh, really? at that company. Yeah, that was towards the end of my bachelor's degree career or mm -hmm. time, and it bled into the master's degree. I think I, I worked for that same company for five or six months after I moved to Arizona, but it was pretty cool. The uh, company wanted to start their own line of, of drywall tools, and I'd never worked with like drywall. I didn't, I didn't know what like, those tools were or, or how they were used, but I got to learn um, uh, uh, about them. And we basically took a competitor's family of tools and my job was to reverse engineer all of them with a pair of calipers and then yeah. create our own CAD models in, in Pro-E back then. It wasn't even wildfire, it was Pro-E back then. Yeah. And so I did that and and like that was really my first experience to doing real uh, engineering design work. And, and I loved it. Super fun. I had a great time, learned a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, and then from there, went into an internship with that testing medical testing place and then finally to the engineering services company. Yeah, I can actually, you know, envision in the back of head, my head, the wheels are turning at, at how relevant, you know, that that reverse engineering and that um, 
the measurements would be would would end up being probably to your career now and when y'all are designing test equipment. Thank so, you so much for watching this segment of the Engineering Success Podcast. If you liked it, make sure to check out the other videos down below that are recommended to you. And if you really like the podcast, make sure to subscribe right down there in the middle. Really appreciate it. It's free to you and helps us a lot out. And last but not least, uh, the best way to help the show grow is to comment down below. So leave your comment if you have any thoughts about this segment. Thanks. Chasing payments, still playing in the basin while I'm working on arrangements. They heard the kid in 50 countries, thank God that's amazing. But I'd rather thank Spotify, they put me on the station.